in this case, you do need to bring all that mama bear energy and papa bear, you know, guardian energy. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Come and get it. Like, you, this is the time to bring out all of that energy and fight for your kid. But, like, save it when it's a kid on the playground who doesn't get it. Hi, I'm your host, Madeline Cheney, and you are listening to episode eight of The Rare Life. Advocating for your child using the FIG method with Dr. Leela Saperstein. Dr. Saperstein created what she calls the FIG method for advocating for your child. We will obviously get into more details about it, but just an overview, FIG is an acronym. So each letter in FIG stands for a consideration you should take when knowing how and if you should advocate for your child. F stands for familiarity, I stands for intent, and G stands for goal. I really appreciate this practical approach to something as complex and emotionally charged as advocacy. Uh, This is a great follow-up to last week's special topic episode with mom Emily as she talked about her own experience in educating others about her daughter Nora. Uh, These episodes really work well together. As special needs parents, we have a lot of opportunities to advocate for our child in a lot of different uh, scenarios and situations. I'm really excited to know about this and I can use this tool and now you can too. Um, So Dr. Saperstein is an audiologist from Israel um, and we connected through social media because she's actually a fellow podcaster. She has a podcast called All About Audiology and I actually got to share my story about Kimball's hearing loss on her show which was really fun. Um, So if you are one of my fellow hearing loss parents, uh, give her podcast a listen. She shares some really interesting insight from the point of view of an audiologist, and she also shares parent stories about the hearing loss journey. Uh, And it's just such a great resource. So I will put a link to her podcast in the show notes, as well as a link to my interview on her show, if you're interested in that. Leela is a lover of dessert, and dancing in the kitchen. Let's learn about the FIG method. Leela, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for this conversation. Yes, <laughs> this will be great. It's something advocating. I just think it's important for anyone and everyone to like find your voice and be able to speak for what you need. But so, so much for parents of children who really have, who really need an advocate, who really yes. need someone to speak for them. Yeah. In the so. special needs world, it's a big deal to be able to advocate and to know how to do that. Yeah. Um, can you give me a little bit of background about your, the FIG method that you have created um, for advocacy? I'm so excited to share it with you and share it with the world. Um, the FIG method for advocacy is something I came up with. It's a three-part framework that has three letters, F-I-G, and we're going to talk about what the whole concept is and how you do this, but I just think it's really important to mention that advocacy, it doesn't just happen automatically because your child gets a diagnosis, like not at all. (laughs) If anything, you're so overwhelmed with like this big news, there can be grief, there can be shock, there can be all of these big questions and action that's like very important and very immediate for your kid appointments and driving around and doctors and like therapies and all these things Mm -hmm. that it's sometimes advocacy gets pushed aside and you yourself are processing. So then how could you possibly come and explain it to someone else when you maybe aren't so clear yourself? Yeah. So it's important to give yourself space when you're going through all of that journey that advocacy will come in when, when you need it. Like usually Mm -hmm. when you notice something's not going right and then you're like, Hey, I actually do need to step up over here. Yeah. Um, But to like give ourselves space and permission and forgiveness and compassion, all those things that we wish for everyone else to have for us and for our child, give it to yourself too. Yeah. And to your partner and to your family. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. Which is why we're even having a conversation about learning how to advocate. (laughs) Like it doesn't just come naturally. And um, so you have a background as an audiologist. How has this principle come into play in your world of your profession? Absolutely. I work with families who have a child that has a hearing loss diagnosis or more than one child. And what I found in my work is that there is so much to do. 
Like we have to do testing, we have to fit hearing aids, we have to talk about batteries and tubes, or when there's cochlear implants, there's a surgery. So like there's other really big major concerns, medical and also just like, like I said, a lot to take in. And then there was this extra missing next step that a lot of families didn't have. They didn't even know that they weren't on that journey because there was so much involved in the first part. So what I'm, my whole mission and my whole goal is to show people that there's a parallel thing happening, that you can both kind of always be hopping from one to the other, where you're doing the practical, technical, important stuff, and you're also doing the fluffy and also very important stuff. <laughs> it's equally as important, you know, so crucial that your mental health should be taken care of as a parent, that you should be supported and know what your resources are and be able to communicate with the people around you about what you need, what your kid needs. Like all those things need to be happening together with, not after the right. whole, you know, In medical tandem. stuff. Yeah, I really like that. In tandem. That's a fancy word. Oh, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Now I sound really smart. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's exactly it. I'm, I'm like parallel. Yeah, in tandem. Perfect. <laughs> That's so great. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it. When you're looking at the FIG method, you pick a situation. Pick a situation. How do you know which one to pick? It's very easy. The one where you got really angry <laughs> or really like upset or triggered or you're crying in your car afterwards or like you came mm. home and told everyone like that lady that in the store, she said this and that, or she looked at us this mm. way or that way. Like something that like really got to you, it, it pushed your buttons. So for, for everyone who's like listening right now, you can just think for a minute and it will probably pop right up <laughs> who that person is. Like, was it a kid at the playground that was rude to your kid? Or maybe it was like your pediatrician that totally missed everything you were trying to say to them. Was it that IEP meeting <laughs> or like <laughs> school meeting or whatever was happening? Like bring that scenario into your mind right now and hold it. I got so, one. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's a, a family friend, maybe it's your mother-in-law, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to think about like what happened? What did they say? What did, how did you react? Okay. So now that you have that in your mind, mm -hmm. think about the F. The F is familiarity. Who is this person to you? So we just gave a bunch of different um, example scenarios, but in, in the one that you're thinking of, is this person important to your life? Like you have a relationship with them or are they a stranger? Like, what is your familiarity with this person? Do they have authority, quote unquote? Like, are they a medical professional or school professional or therapist? Or are they just a random anybody off the street who thinks they could say stuff like, or is it someone on Facebook who you don't even know who they are, but like their <laughs> comment ruined your day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so when you think about the familiarity, okay. So you like put that over here by the F and you hold on to that and say, just like label what kind of relationship you have with this person. If mm -hmm. you have one. Mm -hmm. And then I is intent. At this point, we want to try to see who is this person and what were they trying to do? What was their goal? Like, what was their intention? Their intention was maybe to ask a question, like curiosity. Sometimes they're coming in saying, and like staring, like kids stare at the playground or at Chuck E. Cheese's. They're just staring at you <laughs> and staring at your kid. Like maybe they have, you know, a wheelchair or crutches or whatever else is going on. And, and this kid really had curiosity. Uh, that could be the intent or, maybe the person's intent was they were trying to cover themselves. Like the doctor was being so insensitive by giving you like 8,000 things that could go wrong and just like rattled them off instead of being nicer about it. And it's like, well, mm. their intent wasn't to hurt your feelings or upset you or, you know, scare you. They really just have to do that, like to cross off and check that they said it. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to the situation, you know, was the person really trying to upset you or anger you or hurt you or do they just need information like it's a, is this a caseworker trying to get the story mm -hmm. you know, and you're like why are they making me go back and say the whole thing all over again and it like you know that's mm -hmm. it's a totally valid response but when you start to say hey wait what do they actually want they mm -hmm. want information or they're curious or they're you know, or they're rude. That could be it too. Like you just, mm -hmm. <laughs> just try to yeah. fill in, in your framework of F I G, 
What's the F? Like, how familiar am I with this person? What do I assume their intent was? Because we can never really know. That's the other thing. You can't ever get into someone else's mind, Mm -hmm. but you can make a guess and it helps to sometimes say, were they really being mean? Which could be, or was it coming out of ignorance and maybe curiosity, or maybe they were really trying to protect you? Like, Mm. this is a really common one with family, extended family, especially in-laws even more so, (laughs) because you already (laughs) have that, like, you know, in-laws and attention it's either right they're your family that you got later in life so it's Mm -hmm. not the same as your family grew up with Mm -hmm. anyway the very common thing is that extended family might not accept a diagnosis and might be saying like well why do they need hearing aids they hear me just fine or Mm -hmm. like do you have to do such and such in public can we like feed them in the car if we need to feed them a different way than other kids are fed like those kinds of things. Sometimes for them, their intention is that they're still processing their own and they're still going through their own shame and, you know, Mm -hmm. things that they have to work with. So it's really not about not accepting that you're not okay. Like they're not okay. Yeah. So when you put that in, in your list, in your mind, in the fig method, you're like, it's not really about you. (laughs) Yeah. And that takes a lot of the pressure off Mm -hmm. in those situations. So I think that like with the intent, the nice thing about either figuring out their intent or kind of giving them an intent, whether or not it really is accurate, I think it also helps you, like you said, you kind of depersonalize it so it doesn't seem like it's a personal attack on you. Because I think that's a lot of times how they feel. So you're like, exactly. they don't like me or they think I'm a bad parent or, you know, you, you, you internalize them when really it is more about them. It's less about you yeah. or more about the job they need to do or their insecurities, because even when they, and it's meanness or rudeness, it's, they're, I mean, people who are in a good place, like confidence wise and, and just personally, they don't, they're not usually mean people. So that's one thing that's helped me, like with a situation that Kimball had, kids were making fun of him and he was not aware because he's young enough. But um, when you were talking about the intent, I was like, they just wanted attention. They wanted their parents to pay attention to them. And sometimes we do that in stupid ways. But I think that intent it's great to kind of put yourself in their shoes a bit and see what they were meaning by it or that it really wasn't personal. Yeah. And, and that there's no real judgment about it. You're just kind Mm -hmm. of saying you're considering it for a moment and then moving on like F I G, you know, we're not like, I'm not coming in here and saying, well, maybe they didn't mean to, maybe they, this and that, and like saying they're great and you should not feel your feelings. Not Mm -hmm. at all. Like totally Mm -hmm. validate how you feel about it. Yeah. But then just for one second, go there and then, mm. and then come back <laughs> just briefly. That's interesting. Why do yeah. you say that? Because I feel like that can become dangerous and become yeah. kind of toxic where you're always in other people and constantly forgiving other people for their behavior. But like, that's why I say, if it's, if mm-hmm. it's someone who's consistently rude to you every single time or just doesn't get it, like, then they have made their intent clear enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's very specific to whatever situation is and it's also Mm. why i like to pick one circumstance like go in that story be in that playground (laughs) be there and feel the asphalt on your feet and the kids pushing the kid on the slide like you get into it really do like a visualization Mm -hmm. with it um and then and so it's kind of like a one moment in time Mm -hmm. circumstance um but you can definitely expand it afterwards yeah to like series and patterns yeah and it probably becomes a habit once you use the fig method over and over again where you can just kind of like be like that wasn't their intent they meant this i'm not gonna take it personally and then kind of move on that's right and then when you get to the goal this is where the magic happens okay so <laughs> the g, for the g. <laughs> yes the g and fig is for goal and in this case it's your goal what do you as the parent want out of this mm. in some situations the goal is to move out of that situation, exit. You need to leave, leave Mm -hmm. the playground, get out of the supermarket. Like don't be in that place where someone is antagonizing you or is rude to you or is making you feel unwelcome or whatever it is that's happening. Maybe you need to leave. Like, and then your goal, like when you think, what do I actually want? Then you come and say, Oh, I have to get for the safety of my, myself and my child. We got to get out of here. Like that's what's safe right now. Um, but sometimes the goal is I have an opportunity to educate and to help this person learn. Mm -hmm. So 
that once, but you need the first two steps to be like, okay, if this is my sister-in-law and I really like her and we have a relationship that's going to continue hopefully for many years. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is our holiday get together. I'm not leaving. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I have an opportunity to say like, do I want it? Do I want now to engage and say, well, actually what you just said, uh, do you not know such and such ABC? And Mm -hmm. then she's like, oh, maybe I don't know. So maybe like, engaging from a place of, I want to educate and help them yeah. understand. Um, and other times the goal is that you're trying to get services. Like if you're at a meeting, you can't leave and you're not there to tell them what they need, like what they need to do. You say, here's what I need from you. Here's what like, the services you're offering me once a week when I'm telling you we need four or five times a week. Right. So in this case, you do need to bring all that mama bear energy and papa bear you know guardian energy (laughs) yes yes (laughs) come and get it like you this is the time to bring out all of that energy and fight for your kid Mm -hmm. but like save it when it's a kid on the playground who doesn't get it (laughs) Mm -hmm. so it just helps you to contextualize like get a bird's eye view a little bit and a little more, more space because when you're at the doctor's office and they're like trying to just push the next drug on you, but you're really trying to get them to listen, wait, are we, do we really need this? What are the side effects? What are the other options? What are alternatives? That's where you need to bring out your energy to ask those questions and get your whole plus and minus. Yeah. But like when it's, um, this, it's just the famous mother-in-law story <laughs> that, that people like, I've just heard it many, many times mm-hmm. where even mother, mothers grand, or grandmas, like your own mom also, let's not say there isn't difficulties yeah. in every mother, daughter and whatever relationship. Right. So sometimes there's a lot of tension there about your parenting in general. Now add on top of it, whatever special needs, chronic health, whatever else is going on. Um, there are places you're going to have to start putting boundaries and advocating even in your own childhood home or even when they come to your home, like those relationships. And now you said like familiarity, this is super important to me. And their intent is they still love me. They just don't get it yet. Yeah. Let's, so my goal is let's talk about it. Let's get some education. Let me show them some videos or take them with me to a a peer support group event type thing. So they can Mm -hmm. see other kids who are like my kid. Right. Maybe they've never even seen this. And like, you're sitting here doing 18 hours of Googling, but mom didn't do that. Right. You know, like grandma. Right. Mm -hmm. So she's like, still like, what is all this? What are these words? What is this? Yeah. I think a part of that educating can be also educating them in like, that was a rude thing to say. And you can say in a kind way to just say like, when you said this, that feels hurtful to me. And I don't appreciate it when you say that, because I think a lot of times, especially when there's someone that is close to us and we love them, they're not trying to be mean. Mm -hmm. Um, They may say things that are really hurtful and they just don't understand because a lot of times that is, they haven't gone through the same thing. Like maybe they didn't have a child with special needs. And so they don't understand how that feels as the mom, when someone's Mm -hmm. saying something like that to you. So I feel like that's an important part of that, you know, the goal of like, Hey, one of my goals is going to be to kind of raise awareness in you that I feel terrible when you say that, you know, like that's hurtful. And then they'll probably be like, wow, like I didn't realize that. And, and in the end, a lot of times when I have those open conversations with people I love, we come out of it feeling so much closer and so much more love. And it also, that doesn't come up over and over and over and it doesn't fester. Right. Whoa. That's so important. Um, another important thing that happens is that a lot of times we freeze like physically in our body, when we get overwhelmed, we, you know, there's fight or flight, but there's also freeze where you just like cannot react. Hmm. And it happens a lot in medical settings, especially when there's a big hierarchy difference, like certain countries, that's even more pronounced just Mm -hmm. culturally. Like if a doctor says something, well, that's, that's, you you know, they're, yeah, patriarchal kind of model Mm -hmm. instead of this shared decision-making. So Mm -hmm. that's, also, like maybe you could say one of your goals here is to actually speak, like to get right. words out, to respond. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times it, it gets really flipped on its head because when you want or need to say what you need to say in that school meeting and in the doctor's office, but you can't, then you end up screaming <laughs> or like emoting <laughs> and getting really upset outside of those situations where that's misplaced. Right. Like, you need that, that energy and that fight where you need it. 
And, yeah. and then when it's not relevant, like then it's not about having a thick skin. It's more like just saying, this isn't where I'm going to spend my energy. Like it could mm-hmm. still hurt, but I, I'm not going to now engage in it and let it yeah. hurt more. I'm just yeah. going to let it. Like, yeah. Like it's not worth it. I was like, while we're in the topic of medical, you know, advocacy, mm-hmm. um, it helps me too to be like, Hey, we're going to the uh, GI doctor today. So I need to talk to him about this issue, this issue. And I wonder about this and those, I guess they become my goal. I haven't really thought about it officially with the fig method, but, um, going in to the meeting with your goal in mind, I think is really helpful because then you don't, I mean, like it helps you instead of like, wow, they're the doctor, they're this authority and kind of feeling, um, I don't know. I feel it's comfortable to be like, they're in charge. I'll just let them do it. And so I think having those goals ahead of time is really helpful. So in the moment you don't lose your nerve and not say anything, you're like, well, I need to, we need to talk about these. Even if we don't find answers, he needs to be aware that these are things that are on my mind or things that I've noticed or things that I want to address. Um, and great. I think it helps you feel like the leader of the meeting, right? Like, because as a parent, you really are. You yes. are the person, you are the main advocate for your child. No one loves them like you do. Um, yeah. So having that, that uh, forethought of what your goals are, I think is really helpful. Yeah. And to write them down too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. You have them in a note in your phone or like text yourself. Those mm-hmm. I I have a lot of conversations with myself and text message <laughs> <laughs> for all the things I need to remember. Mm-hmm. But this really goes along with uh, with therapists too. Uh, a lot of times I have awesome therapists in homes. Like they come to our home and help Kimball and they will ask like, so do you have any questions? Or like, are you struggling with anything right now? And if I haven't thought of that beforehand, I mean, I'm like, I don't really remember. I think there was something, but I can't think of it. And so I think having that goal, like with this meeting, um, I do want to address how this assignment they gave me to work on with my child is not working so well. And maybe we need to kind of reframe it or we need to tweak something about it because it does, it just is not coming naturally to me or just coming up with some kind of focus. Because again, uh, it's important to find your voice as the leader of this team this medical and therapy team for your child exactly exactly not only are you the leader you're also the manager and you're the service coordinator (laughs) of your and you're the scheduler you also have to be in charge of meals and laundry on top of keeping your child alive like those right those kind of duties yeah 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 and so in that role of manager it's it's very hard to take that on because like a moment ago you were pregnant and now <laughs> here you are with like a thousand <laughs> responsibilities. And, mm-hmm. and like some people really go head first into that role. They're like, like I said, the Googlers, people who have their notebook and their pen. And they're like, what do I need to do? Give me a list, da, 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 da. join this group, join that Facebook group, advocate, like, you know, the people mm-hmm. who are go, 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 but not like, that's how some people can cope, but other people they, like I said, go into freeze and they're like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what to do. And so, and that's also a response. So like whatever it is that you, however you've reacted to this, it's exactly what you needed to do. But now that you're ready to start looking into ways that you're going to learn how to, how to do this, like you're actually coming up for air and saying, Hey, from on top, can we put some systems into place? How are we going to get support? Who are we going to work with? Bring in some other things to, make it comfortable and successful for your kid plus for you and the other kids in the family and your marriage. Like everything has to be addressed. Well, Leelock, I would love to end with how people can find um, more about the FIG method and about your courses. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So for anyone who's interested in specifically about hearing loss and audiology, come listen to the All About Audiology podcast and um, definitely find special guest Madeline (laughs) on one of our episodes, which is so so exciting. So we talk a lot about the parent journey and the parent experience with their child's hearing loss and a lot of information, but also tons of support and parent stories. So that's for the hearing loss. (laughs) And uh, for advocacy, I really think it can apply to lots and lots of parents who are dealing with any kind of chronic or you know special needs where it's going to continue into all the years of your child's life, not mm-hmm. just like, oh, one thing that we're doing this month, like it's going right. to go on. So you have to also rise with that and grow with that. 
So I do have a course on advocating and that is available at allaboutaudiology.com slash fig, F-I-G. And I have a special free download for all the listeners. You can come by and download it at allaboutaudiology.com slash advocate. And over there, you'll get a free download with a couple of tips and more on the fig method. Awesome. And if you use the hashtag FIG on Facebook or Instagram, then you will see lots of pictures of delightful figs, which I love to eat. But also you <laughs> might see some posts about people sharing about their fig experience where they were able to advocate by contextualizing the situation with the familiarity, the intent, and the goal. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Lee Lock. I, I think this is just so important. Um, and I think it'll really help all of us to be able to have that in the back of our mind. And it's a nice little acronym that we can bring up and be like, FIG, I need to make sure that I, I remember that through all the other things that are going on, all the appointments and the medical stuff, that we remember uh, this tool for advocacy. And I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. If you are a professional and you have a message that would be impactful on the show, head over to my contact page on the rarelifepodcast.com. If you know someone that fits this description, please send them my way. You can like my Facebook page, The Rare Life Podcast, for sneak peeks about episodes coming up. Coming up next week is episode nine, taking charge of your child's therapies. This is a solo episode, and I'm excited to talk about this with you. See you next time.